So over the last few weeks, we've shared with you four different ways that you can try and get some government assistance uh, to get through uh, this illness and uh, the financial hardship that it's caused. We've covered uh, standard unemployment, then you can get an extra $600 a week on top of that. We covered how to apply for the EIDL uh, grant and also what you needed to do to make sure you're going to get that $1,200 stimulus check. We even covered recently how you can get sick pay from Uber and Lyft and some of the delivery companies. Well, here's number five, and it's called PPP, which is Paycheck Protection Program, and it's offered through the SBA. And in this video, I'm going to share with you whether that makes sense for you as an Uber driver or not, and how to apply. And stick around at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you how I applied without even having to step foot inside of a bank. All right, hey everybody, it is Jay Crater with The Rideshare Guy. Just going to drink a little coffee here. It's a beautiful day here in Northern California. The streets are virtually empty. I'm parked outside my house and there's nobody out. But one thing that's coming from this is it seems like the air is getting clearer and uh, we're in springtime here and it's really quite, quite gorgeous. So it's great to be here with you. All right, so the VPP stands for Paycheck Protection Program. And it was designed to cover losses incurred during um, things like this, right? Real tough financial uh, uh, times, which is exactly what we're all going through now. Well, on April 10th, right? So that was on Friday. This program was made available not just to businesses, but to sole proprietors and to independent contractors. They basically opened the floodgates for folks like you and me, Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, delivery drivers of all sorts, who are not working because of what's going on with the illness. So um, it's a loan, and if, as long as you use the money you get from the loan to uh, payroll for payroll, um, then it's going to be forgiven. So as long as you use it for payroll and a few other things, the loan will be forgiven. Now, some of the experts are saying that you cannot um, utilize both unemployment and the PPP loan. So if you happen to get both of those, then you can make a choice of which one is going to actually pay you more. Now you may think, well, wow, the um, unemployment plus that 600, that's gonna pay me a lot more. Not necessarily so, because we don't know how long this is going to last. Um, just for the giggles, I, I went online to look at the curve. I wanted to find out what the curve looks like, because it seems like lately the the big estimates of millions of people dying and then two, 200,000 people are dying, uh, these numbers seem to be getting smaller. So, so what you're looking at right now is uh, from the CDC. And as you can see, the curve kind of peaked and it seems to be at least flattening and starting to, to come down a little bit. Well, then I took another look uh, using Time Magazine, and this was an article that was written yesterday. And here you can see how in a lot of countries, the curve's coming down, right? They're going down the other side of it. And the United States, while it's not coming down in this graph, it's at least peaking. So um, it took, you know, like a month and a half to two months to get to this point. Maybe it takes another month to two to peak. Well, so then you got to figure, well, maybe that's when I have to stop taking unemployment because I can't really say I can't drive if the economy starts to you know, get back, uh, everyone gets back to work. In which case, this kind of a loan may actually give you more money. So, so number two, going to a bank. So um, this is one option. And this is how this has been traditionally been done, is you had to uh, go to a bank and you had to bring in your tax return. And this morning, I actually watched uh, JJ, the CPA, and uh, that's his picture right there. And uh, he made a video uh, back on April 10th uh, talking about what, it what would be required for you as an Uber or Lyft driver or a delivery driver um, to qualify for one of these loans. And he said you need to bring in your tax return. And what they're going to look at is line 31 on your Schedule C, which is the actual amount of money that you earned. So 
you take all the all the money from your 1099 and then you subtract all your expenses and remember for us drivers we subtract a lot because we have that amazing mileage deduction so when you deduct all that stuff it's great for us for paying taxes because it really reduces our our net income down but when it comes to applying for this loan not so helpful uh, because our our numbers are very very low so I kind of broke it out for you in this chart. So if you had, for example, on your 1099 M&K revenue, $64,000, and then you subtract all your expenses, and again, this would include your you know, tremendous mileage deduction, let's say that left you with $24,000. That would be line 31 on your Schedule C. So then to calculate how much of a loan you could get, you would take that amount, divide it by 12 months, right? And that would give you an average net income of two thousand um, dollars that would be like your payroll so the loan amount which they use to calculate the ppp loan is that monthly amount times 2.5 which would be only five thousand dollars right so that's not that much money right so unless you had a tremendous much more net income um, this loan figure is going to be pretty small but you got to remember that um, if you applied for the EIDL loan and you think you're going to get $10,000, some experts are saying you're only going to get $1,000 based on you're the only employee. So this kind of a, this still might make some sense for you. Number three, what else can you do now? So I realize it's been two months since I was driving and I haven't gotten any money from the government. Not a not a cent and it may take another month or two and not everyone can just wait so if you're looking for something to do where you can be a little bit safer and still make some pretty good money um, be sure and check out instacart uh, instacart is hiring like hundreds of thousands of people uh, we had uh, one of our uh, subscribers making two thousand dollars a week uh, doing instacart um, you know you're, you're either in the store doing uh, putting things together or you're out delivering stuff and you're not as engaged with so many people so your chances of getting sick are much smaller and it's booming because there are so many people now that are ordering groceries from home so we put a link uh, below the video uh, so that if you wanted to go and uh, get started with instacart it's easy you just click on it and you're right there at the page okay so number four i did some research and i found out uh, that you don't have to go to a bank to apply for these loans. There are what are called FinTech banks, and these are banks that work primarily on the internet. And I read a great article on Forbes, and there'll be a link to that article under this uh, video. And in it, it gives you links to about a dozen or so uh, FinTech banks, where you can just click, and then you can go and apply. I just went and I grabbed a screenshot for you so you could see what it looks like when you click on one of these links. So what you're seeing now is the homepage uh, for Divi, uh, which is where you can go and actually apply for a PPP loan as an independent contractor or as a sole proprietor. And if you do a little research, you're going to find some of these do ask for a tax return, but some of them do not. I found a company called Lendio, um, and all they wanted was a uh, 10, my 1099s, um, I had to provide proof front and back of a driver's license, and then they wanted a payroll ledger. So I thought, a payroll ledger, well, that's just like a spreadsheet that shows how much in payroll I paid out, right? So I worked the numbers based on my 1099s, and what you're seeing right now is uh, an example of what you could put together. So I just laid out, you know, the 12 months of the year, uh, revenue, right? You can just... Uh, put your numbers, these are just dummy numbers, but I put numbers in so you could see how you would do it um, based on the revenue that you got from Uber and Lyft, and then uh, figure out what would be a, a fair payroll amount based on how much money you made. In this example, it's $6,000, right? Basically, I created a, a legitimate document that showed my payroll is $6,000 um, per month. So now, um, you put that in the application and it's automatically going to figure out for you how much your PPP loan amount would be. And what you see here is they take that amount 
of 6,000 a month and multiply it by two and a half. So now you've got a loan amount of $15,000. So that's worth uh, going for, I would say. So there's a link uh, to the article and in the article, there's links to a whole bunch of different FinTech uh, banks that you can go and apply for. Um, everyone says it's first come first serve. So I would jump on it as soon as you can. I just did mine yesterday. Um, and then I did get an email right away um, confirming that they received it. And then I got an email, which you're seeing right here. It says, good news, over the weekend, Lendio helped 25,000 plus business owners get approved for a total of 500 million in approved PPV funding. We're excited for the momentum and anticipate this week we will have many thousands of additional applications processed and approved. All right, so what are the key takeaways here? The PPP program, the Paycheck Protection Program is a legitimate loan that is available for independent contractors and sole proprietors such as Uber and Lyft drivers. You'd want to get it as a backup or maybe as your primary source of funding uh, from the government through this uh, illness. Um, if you have to use your tax returns, that is kind of difficult for us as drivers because we do take so many deductions and that mileage deduction really reduces the amount of net income. Go online, find a FinTech company and find one that doesn't require the tax return, but rather your 1099s. And the last thing I'm gonna say is remember, we're all just fishing out there, okay? Take a half an hour and get this thing done and you just got another, another line in the water. And the more lines in the water you got, the better your chances of something good getting snagged on your hook and you're reeling it in. That's, that's my philosophy here. So now we've covered five different ways that you can get some funding from the government. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. This is Jay Crater with The Rideshare Guy saying thank you very much for your attention. Uh, hope these videos are helping you and giving you some hope. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet to our channel, subscribe, join our team, stay up to date on all of these things. As things start coming in, we're going to report on that as well. And uh, it's just going to be a real fun road that we're all on together. You'll go out and have a great day. Be safe out there.